There's absolutely nothing worse than having a car interior completely pulled apart because you're doing a car audio install and then realizing that you don't have something that you need. Before I start any car audio installation, I like to make sure that I go through a checklist to double check that I have every single thing that's needed for that install. Now, obviously you're gonna need your speakers, subwoofers, amplifiers, whatever gear you're actually installing into the vehicle, but what other smaller consumable items do we often forget about? Well, in this video, I wanna run through the list of items that I always double check. That way you guys will never make the mistake of getting stuck in the middle of an install ever again. Hey guys, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install a car audio system that you can really enjoy and that sounds amazing. So let's jump in, item number one that I like to make sure that I have on hand before I start an install. All right, item number one here. If we open up the drawer O tape, and I'm actually running a little bit low on this right now, but item one is speaker gasketing tape. So speaker gasketing tape is a thin foam tape, and right now it has a protective tape on it, and that's because if you peel this away, you can see it has an adhesive side. Now I find that I use this in a lot of different areas of the install. Say that you're installing new speakers and you've built or bought some new speaker brackets. This is great to put between the speaker bracket and the sheet metal that it bolts to. It prevents any rattles between those two surfaces. So really anywhere that you find that two surfaces rattle against each other, this is a quick and easy solution to prevent that. Now this here is just a quick little mock-up, but imagine that you had a subwoofer box as well that you were installing a subwoofer into, you can use this tape around the inside edge to make sure that you have a perfect airtight seal. You can also do the same thing for smaller speakers. That's why it's called speaker gasket tape. This is a great low cost item that just you'll find uses for left and right. Definitely recommend it. While we're on the topic of tapes, it's always good to have some painter's tape on hand as well. What this can come in handy for is say that you're trying to capture a shape off of a door panel. You could lay a bunch of layers of this, you could make a surface, and you could sketch that shape and then transfer to a piece of wood. I also have some different Tessa tapes here. This is a Tessa harnessing tape. These patches peel away, you can use it to secure wires within a vehicle. So all sorts of different tapes. I also have some Velcro tape. You never would believe how many times having some strips of Velcro that you can cut and easily stick to stuff can be helpful. It can be helpful for securing sound insulation materials, temporarily securing wire bundles, lots of different uses there. So any tapes are great to have. Next we have heat shrink. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with what heat shrink is. We use it to terminate the ends of a wire connection. I like to just make sure that I have all different sizes on hand. I have all of these made up. These are good for terminating the ends of some of the larger power wires. And then of course I have some smaller sizes on hand for smaller wires so that when we make a soldered connection, we can just cut this and slide it over the wire and then heat shrink it down on. Now while we're on the topic of wiring, let's talk about some different wire connections. Now, something to keep in mind if you're installing speakers that don't necessarily have a push style connector, they might have male spade connections. So to connect to your wire, you're going to need the female spade connector. These come in a variety of different sizes. A lot of times speakers will actually have a small size and then a larger size. That way you don't mix the polarity up. But in general, these are pretty cheap, so I recommend just buying a whole bunch if you plan on doing more than one car audio install and just having them on hand. Now something a little bit more unique that I like to have on hand are these style of connections. I like these so much, I actually did a full video about them, but what these are really useful for is say that you have a speaker pod that you're connecting within the vehicle, or let's say that you want to be able to easily remove a speaker without necessarily disconnecting the speaker connections itself, you could have wire on each side of these connectors, and you can see you can plug them in together and then unplug them from one another as well. Now something else that's unique that you wanna have on hand are these. These are wire ferrules. So what these are for, and I have them for all different sizes right here, but this is actually a four gauge wire example. 
you can see that you slide them over the end of the exposed wire. So what this does, when you install it into an amplifier that has a set screw style terminal, it will actually crimp down on that ferrule and it will secure that ferrule around the wire. So where the ferrule helps is a lot of times with these set screw style terminals, when you crank down on them and tighten on just the wire, the wire is gonna spread out and actually over time it can settle more and more and that connection can become loose. Now with a ferrule that won't happen because the set screw literally tightens down on the ferrule and this ferrule is made of very thin metal so it will actually deform but it bites better into that. Give you guys a little bit of close up action there so you can see it, but I have a full video about using these as well. Next up, something else that you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that you have on hand for your install, dielectric grease. So what dielectric grease is great for is in an install when you're securing a ground wire, you wanna make sure that you grind away any of the paint on that surface that you're securing the ground wire to. Now, since that metal is now exposed, we don't want it to just be exposed to the open air environment or it's gonna to start to corrode and rust. So what we do is we'll take dielectric grease and we'll actually glob some of it out. You can see it's just a clear grease like so. There it is right there. And then once we put some of it out, we would smear it around on that exposed metal and it's gonna prevent that metal from corroding. Let's see if we can actually take a look in here and see an example spot down in there. So it is grease, so obviously it's gonna attract some dirt, but if you look up at the top of the square, kind of up to the right, you can see that silver coloring, that's the exposed metal. There's absolutely no rust. Again, it is a little bit dirty, but when I installed this particular ground wire here, I made sure that I put some of the dielectric grease on. By the looks of it, apparently bugs can get stuck in it too. Oh no, dielectric grease! Ah! Next thing you'll wanna make sure you have on hand, fuses. Now of course, depending on what style of fuse holder you have, that's gonna change the different style of fuses that you'll need. So hopefully it doesn't happen. I do find that it is actually pretty rare to actually blow a fuse, but you never know. It would stink to be in the middle of an install and get to that point that you're ready to finally start testing and you turn everything on and your initial fuse blows because you made a mistake, it would stink not to have a replacement on hand. So you guys know that I love talking about wire management and obviously one of the best things to really manage your wires and bundle them together is to have zip ties or test tape, but something else that I like to make sure that I have on hand are these wire clamps. So I think these things speak for themselves. You can run wires through them or you can actually put them around wires if you've already ran the wires and then you just simply secure them using some sort of fastener, whether it be a wood screw or a sheet metal screw. They obviously come in a variety of different sizes and again, these are really cost effective so it doesn't hurt to just have a bunch on hand so that you have them when you need them. For the next couple of items, we're gonna take a look in another one of my drawers out this guy. So I think it's also really important to have on hand different sorts of threaded fasteners. Now as you can tell I have a couple of different styles in here. First are these that I really like. What these are for is you'll actually drill an oversized hole in a piece of wood or in a piece of plastic and then you can thread these down into that piece of material and now you have metal threads that you can use virtually an unlimited amount of times with a fastener. So this is really good for making your install serviceable so you can remove beauty panels or other parts of the build. If you guys watch my videos often, you know that I pretty much use these all the time. You can also get these guys here. These are a little bit more of a cost effective version and they also seem to actually bite into MDF a little bit better because they have more of this coarse style thread. But same idea on the inside, it has that machine thread. Now I also really like to make sure that I have threaded rivets on hand. Now what these are for is when you need to secure something to the sheet metal of the vehicle. So it might be an amplifier, it might be an oversized new speaker adapter. There's lots of different options for it these, but the way they work is you'll drill again an oversized hole, you'll put these through, and then these have a special tool. Let me show you. This here is the special tool, and if we take this guy out of its case, you can see here on the end we have a threaded mandrel, if you will. The threaded rivet here installs onto the mandrel, 
you install that into the vehicle, you pull these levers to the side, and it will actually treat this like it would a normal rivet, and it actually rivets it into the sheet metal. So these threaded rivets are a much more robust and better solution for adding a thread to a thin piece of sheet metal. So these are a bunch of things that I like to make sure that I have on hand before I start an install, but I'm always curious, what are some things that you guys think are valuable to have on hand as well? If this is your first time here, here on this channel, I do car audio reviews and tutorials and build log videos. If you'd like to be notified when I upload future videos, I would love to have you as a subscriber. A special thanks goes out to J Mac, Brian, Ali, Jerry, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, and Truman, and the rest of the Patreon support team. As always, my friends, don't forget to design, build, and install.